Sonia had a question about inverse functions, and her question was to prove that these two functions, f of x and g of x, are inverses of each other. Now we can clearly see that g of x is the inverse of f of x by rewriting f of x as y equals 3x minus 2, switching the y and the x around so that we have x equals 3y minus 2, and then solving for y, okay, by adding 2 to both sides, x plus 2 is x plus 2, 3y minus 2 plus 2 is just 3y, and dividing by 3, divided by 3, divided by 3, so that we get y equals x plus 2 over 3. Now if you notice, this is the same as g of x. Now if we did the same thing for g of x, rewriting it as y equals x plus 2 over 3, switching the y's and the x's so that we have x equals y plus 2 over 3, and then solving for y. So we're going to multiply both sides by 3, that way we have 3x equals y plus 2, and then subtracting 2 for both sides so that we have y equals 3x minus 2 which, as we can see, is the same as f of x. Now, this should be sufficient enough to prove that the two functions are inverses of each other, but there's a few more rules involved. Now, one of the rules is that in order to prove it, we have to plug g of x into f of x and plug f of x into g of x and solve for both and they, the solution for both should be x. In other words, what I need to do is find out what f of g of x equals. Now we know that g of x is x plus 2 over 3 so we can rewrite this as... So this equals what? We can rewrite this as f of... Since g of x is x plus 2 over 3 we can just plug that in for g of x, x plus 2 over 3, okay, and now this is going to equal, we're going to plug this in wherever we see x, so that we have 3 x plus 2 over 3 minus 2, okay. Now, we're going to do the same for g of x, we're going to find g of f of x, okay, and this should equal g of f of x is 3x minus 2, so it's going to be g of 3x minus 2. This is going to equal, I'm going to plug 3x minus 2 into here, so that we have 3x minus 2 plus 2 over 3. Now, if they are inverse functions, these two better equal x. Now, if only one of them equals x and the other one doesn't, then they're not inverse functions, but if they both equal x, then they are inverse functions of each other. Now, a cool thing that you can note about inverse functions is if I were to plug in a number, such as 2 into f of x, right, so that I have f of 2, okay, this is going to equal 3 times 2 is 6, minus 2 is 4. Now, if I plug in 4 into g of x, I better get 2, okay? Because f of 2 is 4, and we know that they're inverse functions, that means that g of 4 is going to equal 2. And we can find proof for that. g of 4, 4 plus 2 is 6, divided by 3 is 2. Now, this will work for any number, for example f of 3. 3 times 3 is 9 minus 2 is 7 and g of 7 is going to equal 3. Okay, plug 7 into here, 7 plus 2 is 9 divided by 3 is 3. So f of 2 is 4, g of 4 is 2. f of 3 is 7, g of 7 is 3. Okay, and that's what it means for two functions to be inverses of each other. Now what I'm going to have you do is 
solve for this and solve for this. Okay, don't just write out it equals x because you're not going to get full marks if you don't show your work. So what you need to do is do the operations, okay, and see what you get. And if you get x as the answer for both, then f of x and g of x are inverses of each other. Okay, I hope this helps you guys out. Please rate, comment, do all that good stuff. Give me a thumbs up. Alright, thank you. Bye-bye.